Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you're actually watching this. I'm Father Marshall Shelley coming to you from St. Peter's Episcopal Church. It is time for a weekly update. Uh, just a little bit of busyness and some Sabbath to talk about in regards to August as we enter into a new month and start to think and prepare for what a ministry and school year is going to look like. Our program year starts in September right after Labor Day, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But I wanted to give you the word for the week, and the word for the week is formation. Uh, formation is that thing that uh, that literally makes us, that pulls the bits together, creates that matrix, that reality of what we are and how we engage the world. It's the resource bucket that we reach into, the tool bag of skills and learnings and, uh, and, and bits and pieces of wisdom that we accrete throughout life that helps us to function. I was having breakfast with uh, a colleague in the diocese yesterday, and I'm in the midst of an intensive uh, second course in my Doctor of Ministry program at Drew Theological School. Shout out to Drew. And I'm literally enmeshed and embroiled in formation, both in terms of my own as I enter into this new program late in life, and at the same time as we start to think about how we're going to approach formation in uh, the year to come at St. Peter's. So one of the things I do want to give you attended attention to or draw your attention to is that we are on a Sabbath moment. We're taking a breath in our program. So there's no men's breakfast. There's no women's breakfast. Uh, we're going to take a pass on the grief group. Part of that is because our staff is rotating in terms of vacations and leaves. The other piece of the puzzle is that we're trying to lift the weight a little bit and take a breath so we can get some recreation and recreation in before we hit the new school year. Of course, there are things that are happening per force. Like for instance, the Community Foot Ministries School Supply Drive, an annual effort we've been doing for over 10 years to gather school supplies, <coughs> excuse me, school supplies for those who need them in the Spotswood school system. Just saw the news report today that if you were to walk into a store and buy everything you would need for a school year, the average cost of outfitting a student this year for their school experience, this is anyone from high school down to grade school, is almost $899. So whatever we can do to offset the cost of that is key. The good news is, is that the shop at St. Peter's is really orienting itself toward the support of that. So if you have a youngster in need of school supplies or if you know of a family that is in need, a lot of kids, they can't handle that expense or they're in a point where things are kind of tight for them, make sure you contact us. The shop is there to help with uh, gently used clothing. We're also going to be distributing the school supplies that are donated through Community Vote Ministries to and to St. Peter's through that portal so that people who come in getting assistance in our feeding programs and at the shop can get access to those school supplies as they need them. So that's one thing to be mindful of. The other thing to be mindful of is to remind you that not only do we have Alice's Cupboard open Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We also have the Mini Mart slash Kelly's Cupboard Food Pantry on site here, and uh, we serve uh, the community supper and also offer distribution of food on Wednesday evenings. This is a key element because you can also participate as a backyard gardener. If you've got zucchini and summer squash, like my wife Laura and I have zucchini and summer squash. We pulled eight of them off the vines today. We can't possibly, the two of us, eat that much summer squash and zucchini, so we have to share, and we're hoping that you will join us in that effort um, and donate some of that produce. You can donate them at the shop. We'll offer them up to our customers so they can take them home and cook them. You can donate them to Alice's Cup, and you can donate them as well to the Mini Mart Food Pantry. Just drop them off here at the church during the open hours. We'll make sure they get to those in need. So formation, back to that. The thing about formation I want to draw your attention to is realize that anything that causes you to expand, broaden, deepen, become more profoundly aware of what it is to be a child of God, an agent of Christ's body in the world, someone active in ministry and engaged, is a key element. 
going back to my breakfast that I had with my colleague on, uh, yesterday morning, one of the things that blew me away as I was listening to him give his testimony is that he is literally suspended between three different parishes helping with men's Bible studies, helping with leadership and fellowship, helping with the development and stewardship ministries of different churches. Um, this is because he has friends in all those places. And on top of that, he was also a graduate of Education for Ministry, one of the, probably the best lay ministry formation programs in the Episcopal Church, one of the most daunting as well. It's a four-year commitment of mentored um, every other Thursday during the school year work. You go to school to become a better follower of Jesus Christ. It isn't just this passing thing. You're actually doing serious work in order to complete your catechism, complete your formation as a Christian, and enter into a more illuminated, more um, more demonstrative, and more focused awareness of what it means to be a servant of the living God. Formation is essential. You know, I, I often liken it to a blacksmith's work. Sometimes we're the hammer, sometimes we're the anvil, and sometimes we're the stock that is heated in that forge, taken to the anvil, and formed to purpose. But always we are part of that creative process. So I'm wondering, how are you experiencing formation today? Do you need to jumpstart yourself and get into a new pattern of living, a new way of approaching things? Do you need to pick up the Bible? Do you need to engage in a, a, a group effort? where you say, hey, let's go learn something. Um, you know, my mom, before she passed away earlier this summer, was engaged in a Bible study uh, for the last couple of years at an Orthodox Jewish synagogue, a faithful Episcopalian who discovered fellow journeyers in formation, and she could learn things in a way that she had never learned before. This is a woman who was approaching the end of her life, and still she was looking on ways to form herself more fully and to grow in wisdom and grace and intelligence and awareness of what it means to be someone who is in the process process of becoming more so themselves, more so aware of what is happening in the world around them, and more so aware of the kingdom of God. So in the midst of my formation moment, I'm reaching out, taking a little break. I'm going to go grab some more coffee, going to get ready for class. I've got some reading to do, but I wanted to wish you well today and ask you to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Join us here at St. Peter's as we worship on Sundays in August. And of course, beginning in September, we'll return to the daily office in the midweek worship. But for now, my dear friends in Christ, my siblings in Christ, take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.